If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know that I've been spending a lot of time in Turkey recently. Now that's partly because I do have some yachts that are for sale over here in Turkey and partly because I've been checking out the Turkish yacht building scene. In my opinion, the quality of yachts in Turkey has been really improving of late and one of the most prolific of all of their yacht builders is New Marine. So today I've been picked up from my hotel by Ali Panir. Good morning everyone. He's going to take me to the factory, then we're going to have a look at one of their yachts in the berth. I should mention that New Marine have really um, developed as a production yacht builder. Most of their production range is actually in composites, building some pretty big yachts, well over 100 foot. But the yacht we're looking at later is a 32 XP. That's a 32 meter explorer yacht with a steel hull and a composite superstructure. There's work going on on board, so this is not one of those really beautifully produced magical type videos where everything's perfect this is a real life behind the scenes day in the life of a yacht broker at the new marine factory and on one of their yachts so enjoy the day with us so ali and i have had a, a lovely cup of turkish coffee upstairs in one of their offices and now he's waiting for me down here because I have a confession to make and we've done half the tour already and I realised my microphone wasn't switched on so we're going on the second tour now. And we're starting with the shed where the 32XP is built in. That's their recently uh, released Explorer Yacht, 32 meter Explorer Yacht. And it's the model that we were looking at uh, this afternoon and because the model, thank you very much, because the model we're looking at this afternoon is now in the water, the shed, as you can see, is empty. Uh, they're cleaning it up, ready for the next 32XP to arrive, which will be hull number four that gets here in two weeks' time. However, there is something very interesting in this shed that I want to show to you, and it's right at the end. This is called a CNC cutting machine. It's an extremely expensive piece of equipment, and it's really only worth buying if you're confident that you're gonna sell a large number of composite yachts. This gives us a great opportunity just to show you a little bit about how composite yachts are built because the, the CNC machine will cut a large piece of polystyrene like the one that you can see there to the shape of the object that needs to be produced. So in this case it's a hatch door, um, from I think from one of their older models you yes. say. They yeah. kindly put it there to, uh, for us to film. So the CNC machine will cut to the polystyrene to the exact shape and then it gets covered in a paste which hardens which you can actually see here and again the CNC cutting machine cuts again this time over the hardened paste to the exact size of the object that they need. Now this creates what's called a plug and a plug is used to then make a mold so the plug is covered with plastic basically hardened plastic and that hardened plastic becomes a mold for the actual Part of the yacht. As a matter of fact, this CNC cutting machine um, has made the entire hull for their 26 meter XP. Um, Not only 26 meter, but all our new models, like upcoming 62s, 70s, 78, some uh, facelifts on the 78. Yes, it's already been since 2002. Uh, this machine is working for eight new models. So it's well used, and, and they do have a great production line going. Uh, New Marine. Let me just show you into the next shed because you'll get more of an idea of, uh, of what we're explaining. And this is the mould for the hull of their 26 meter XP, their 26 meter Explorer yacht. You can see the bow here. It's not quite a vertical bow but uh, almost. The big difference between their 26 XP and the 32 is that whilst the 26 has a composite hull, the 32 has a steel hull. But Ali was explained to me that this is really one of their most successful models, so to build in composite is a very smart move. And we just come around the back here and I'll show you what it looks on the, like on the inside, because before they even pop the hull out of the mould, as you can see, they put in some of the structural bulkheads um, and Ali was actually telling me that not only the bulkheads go in, but they can fit some of the cabinetry, what we may call structural cabinetry. So the things that go around the, uh, the, the outside 
uh, of the of the staterooms, things that are really going to be connected. I think they call it tabbing in. Things that are going to be tabbed into the uh, to the hull itself. Of course, it's not only the hulls that they need molds for. Pretty much everything on the yacht that's built out of composite needs a mold and this is a fantastic area to, uh, to take a look at and to understand exactly how yachts are built. Uh, what you're looking at there is an upside down hard top for one of, uh, one of their yachts. But let me just show you um, something that's particularly interesting around the corner here. You see the yellow, yellow bag that's on top, of, uh, on top of this mold? Actually it's not a mold, this is actual finished piece. Um, that's called vacuum infusion. What they do is when they're building in composites, not all shipyards do this, but the more advanced ones do, they'll basically cover it in plastic um, and then they suck all of the air, like all of the air out, which makes the finished product lighter and stronger. Um, so vacuum infusion has been going for quite a few years and it's a very, very sophisticated and, and efficient way of building composite yachts. And then up here, there's another really interesting thing to look at because if you, if you take a look at this that I'm walking past, and we'll get a better look at it in a moment, that is the mould for the entire deck of a 26-metre yacht. Now, that takes up a lot of space, as you can see. So what do they do with the ones that they're not using? Well, they tip them sideways and they store them vertically. So what we're looking at here... In fact, there you can see, this is a, a seven, the deck of a 78, that's the deck of a 70, all stored vertically to save space. Now, you can see the guy at the end there, I don't know if you can, but there's a guy at the end on top of this mould who's cleaning it. The reason he's doing that is because they've literally just popped off the deck for this particular yacht. And so now they need to clean it down so that they can use it again to build another deck for the next yacht. Now this is the part where they do all the stainless steel. I said earlier that um, New Marine describes themselves as factories within a factory, and this is one of their factories. They do all of the stainless steel work themselves. Now that is not just the piping, which you can see in here, used for the plumbing and for other things in the, in the yacht, but it's also that really beautiful polished stainless steel that's used, for example, this is a, a, an anchor plate effectively uh, for one of their yachts being finished for, what, for the 26 meter, for the 26 meter uh, anchor place they've got another CNC cutting machine but smaller used for steel here as well and I especially liked this little actually before we look at the little room this fascinated me because um, the level of organization here is really impressive I think that's called a, a Gantz chart so that all the workers know what's expected from them, when they should finish. But look at this, this, uh, this here, every green square is a day without an accident in the shipyard. The day that there's an accident, and you know, when I say an accident, it doesn't have to be a fatal accident, even just a little injury, they fill that in red. And of course their, their aim is to have a 100% record and it looks like they're doing very well on that. Here they store a lot of the smaller finished pieces. So you've got the, the New Marine logo there. And if you've watched other videos that I've produced, you'll know that I speak sometimes about noise and vibration. And, and these, these things here are called silent blocks. And they're used, uh, they're basically, as you can see, rubber pads that are used when they fit the ceilings and the, and the and the floors of yachts so that um, there's no vibration transmitted from the engines and from the generators. The, all of the vibration is absorbed by these rubber mounts. But these are for our anchor chains. These are for our anchor chains. 
And those are not silent blocks, they're for the anchor chains, apparently. So the, what, the uh, chain runs through yeah. there? Yeah, okay. But again, it is, again, for the vibration and the sound also. Again, sure. It has to be shock observed and the sound observed at the same time. Excellent. I'm sure they use silent blocks as well. By the way, the shed over there, the little white shed, is a sandbox. So when they're sanding down those moles, just getting them absolutely perfect, creates a bit of dust. So you can see the guy there blowing the dust off of himself because he's been sanding down in the sandbox. Okay, so that that you're looking at is a bulbous bow. The 26 XB comes in two versions, one with the bulb and one without. One's displacement, the other's semi-displacement. And this is where the magic happens. This is where the boats are actually all put together. And at the moment in the shipyard they have two 26 XBs being built. You can see there with a, I think that's called a fairing board. They're just getting it really lovely and smooth. It may be that the owner of that one wants it to be painted a particular colour. And that deck, you remember the big green mould that they were cleaning for a deck? The deck has literally just been fitted to this, uh, to this yacht. And in the time it took for me to uh, go back to pick up my GoPro, film the first two minutes of the video, realise I'd uh, not turn the microphone on and then come back. They've actually pretty much got the deck fitted, so they really do move on at quite a, quite a pace here. Actually, look at this big expanse here. This, is, uh, this can be used for workers to uh, sort of prepare material when it comes on board or for them to store cabinetry, for example, when it's ready to fit on board the, the boat. I'll just lift my GoPro up so you can take a proper look at that. I don't know how much more you saw. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Ali to explain in a moment this, um, this notice board here, because they, they've been looking at a Japanese method of, um, of industry, really, of production that's absolutely fascinated. And I'll just let Ali explain to you a little, uh, a little about this. Yes, we've been working since last three, five years, we've been working with Kaizen system, which is a Japanese production system with 5S. So what we are really willing to find out are, is the waste. Waste of time, waste of man hour, waste of production or, and waste of material. So we've been uh, trying to teach our workers and we've been trying to educate ourselves also, try to do the reworks as less as possible. And, in, and we have a principles and we have a, a motto to be there. So we are aiming to be one of the biggest, uh, fifth, one of being the top five producer in Europe. And we have to be the best one. We have to improve ourselves. We have to improve our learning. We have to learn. We have to work on our man hours. And the most important thing is that we don't need to be afraid to make mistakes, but we have to be afraid to repeat the mistakes. That's the most important point. As you can see, that glass over there is our production, the factory director's office, which he sees the production line directly. And he, is, he was in Japan for a couple of months ago to be able to work with TPS, Toyota Production System, simple production system, work there, learn more, and came back, and he's exactly applying what he learned over there. And actually, as I, as I walked around the, uh, the shipyard, there's quite a few Japanese uh, influences. I was really impressed that they've sent their production manager to Japan, because actually, as countries go, it's a pretty uh, efficient country to, to emulate in, uh, in their production practices. He's coming through the reception here. Which, by the way, if you're a yacht broker and you're watching this video, yes, I know that you watch my videos, you guys. This is a nice place to bring your clients to. It's a lovely, welcoming atmosphere. This is called the planning office. And it leads on, I think, if my memory serves me, to the technical office. Oh no, better than that, before we get to the technical office. 
They have a Zen garden. Now we've had a few days of horrible weather and rain. Today we're blessed with sunshine, so that's the reason all the leaves have fallen and looks like a bit of wind damage has been done here. But what a great idea, a Zen garden. And here is the technical office, and it's a pretty big department, as you, as you can see. So design work will be done here. Um, and then obviously it's important for the technical guys and the production guys to, to work very closely together. They're all in the 33 suite number three, so it's empty because we're in the time for delivery. That's right, it's, we'll be seeing later on a lot of their staff will be on the boat in the marina. Then we've got some... The cosmic room. Oh, this is amazing, the cosmic room, yes. So, they start work early in the morning here. And by five past seven, every morning, they all get around this table and they consider what work they need to do during the day. Um, I'm not going to get into too many details here, but the level of organisation is very apparent. Gantt charts, there's, there's the red and blue lines that indicate what their goal was in terms of man hours and what they actually achieved in terms of man hours. And something that Ali and I discussed earlier in the day, which he had exactly the same opinion as me, is that this is a shipyard that has nothing to hide. Not only are they allowing brokers like myself in to look around, but they were quite happy for me to film this. They've got nothing to hide. It can be put on the internet. This is the way they work and they are proud of it. Something that New Marine are very proud of, and quite rightly so, is that everything on the yacht is done in-house. Having worked uh, for a yacht builder, I know what that means, because if you have to wait for suppliers who are also supplying your competitors, it can get really expensive in terms of time and money as well. If you can produce it yourself, then uh, it makes such a big difference. So from here we go to the New Marine Cafe. And uh, one of the nice things at New Marine is that everybody eats together. The boss, the owner of the company, the workers, the cleaners, everybody. There's no, there's no hierarchy in that sense here. It's a nice family atmosphere, which I can testify to. I haven't been here before. Lovely atmosphere uh, amongst everybody. We'll be back there soon to grab a bite to eat. But first, here we have another factory within the factory, which is the, um, the cabinetry shop, the carpenters. Everything is produced here, really. And you can see some, uh, some of the cabinetry close to completion, just getting finished off. But look at this. I bet you wouldn't expect to see something like this. This is the entire deck of one of their yachts. So they can actually get the whole deck finished to exactly the right size so that they're ready just to fit it when the time comes uh, onto the yacht itself. So you immediately feel the temperature change here. It's a very warm room. This looks like it's probably teak capping rails here. So they want to keep it all nice and dry, no humidity. And you can see they're finishing off just sanding it down there with quite a loud extraction system, which of course is essential to keep the place dust free. And we move on to some painting booths. Anything that needs to be painted can be done here. Again, temperature controlled to dry out the, uh, the paint. Another one, really nice and clean, and a few, few pieces there just drying in the warmth. And we'll go back to the office. Uh, Ali and I, having done that, are gonna have uh, some lunch at the canteen, and then we'll see you down at the boat in the marina. So I'm entering the yacht from the side deck. As you can see, a lot of activity going on. There's a lady here getting even the cushions prepared because the owner very soon is going to pick up and take delivery of his yacht. So this is quite a critical time to see it. A lot of work going on. Basically, before they take delivery, the staff of the shipyard will go over every single detail on board. And if anything needs replacing, such as obviously there's a little bit of the parquet there that uh, needs repairing and replacing, they want to make sure that the yacht is delivered in an absolutely perfect condition. Remember, all of the cabinetry that you can see here has been made in-house by the shipyard. Even this table, this marble table with a stainless steel surround. 
but to get back to the actual sort of walkthrough part of the video as you can see the uh, 32 xp has got a huge saloon area it's very beamy really noticeable the beam on it um, massive television there in the corner and then there's space clearly for another television where Ali was standing moving through though the XP all of them have got one particular feature which is quite unusual which is they all have this gymnasium which is rather cool and I'm seeing more and more gymnasiums on yachts I suppose if you don't want it you can use this for a very small office area um, you don't absolutely have to have the gymnasium but so far everybody who buys one of these does It's called the day head for the benefit of people who don't know nautical terms. A head is a toilet on a boat. I think a lot of my viewers know that. And then forward, this is traditionally where the master stateroom is located. On this yacht, uh, they're using this area for the VIP stateroom. And you'll see why that is a little bit later. Again, the yacht's not completely ready for delivery just yet. There's a few little things uh, that need to be done. But uh, let me just highlight the huge windows that they have. And that must be pretty cool to wake up to those windows every morning. Obviously they have their own ensuite bathroom, their own ensuite head. Lovely big shower. In there. And I'm going to take you through below deck where the rest of the uh, guest cabins are. And this is the layout of this yacht. And I think this is the usual layout, the standard layout for a 32 XP. So you've got a lovely twin cabin here and they have their own bathroom. It's off, so I'll put the light on. Their own shower room. Opposites, you have exactly the same again. And then at this end of the corridor, you've got the double rooms. By the way, those uh, stainless steel plates, they're called storm shutters. And that's if you're doing any heavy crossings for extra security, you can just bolt them down so that your windows are, are secured. Again, absolutely lovely bathroom here on the size of that shower. I must say, by the way, that I think that the fact that New Marine let me do this is an absolute tribute to them and the confidence that they have that they build a great product. Now, I've just stopped here because there's a platform there and I just want to show you something that Ali showed to me earlier. And this really highlights the pride they have in the work that they do because I've been on a lot of new yachts of this size when they're delivered. And building a yacht creates a lot of creates a lot of dirt and dust and it's not unusual that you look in the bilge and it's full of dirt and dust i've even seen scrunched up coca-cola cans in a bilge before now but the fact that uh, ali was keen to open up platforms show me the state of the bilges is a, a real demonstration of the pride that everybody here has in their work and in their cleanliness the steps lead directly to the bridge wait for this to get in focus so this is obviously where the captain's gonna be spending a lot of his time you've got this lovely touch uh, touch screen here where you can monitor monitor the whole yacht see the levels of the tanks the levels of the batteries um, and then this is a rather neat idea that I've not seen done before just in case the captain needs to he has his own bathroom in here aft of the bridge on this yacht where you may see sometimes a lounge area on this yacht is going to be used for the master stateroom and it's going to be a pretty palatial stateroom too as you can see they're still working on this but uh really all that's left to be done is put the mattress on make the bed put all the soft furnishings i say it like that's a little matter of course it's a, a lot of work to do the whole yacht
and then you have this huge aft deck and not to mention the huge crane as well um, remember this is an explorer yacht and so you need to have plenty of space for tenders and toys and you can actually fit an eight and a half meter tender on this aft deck which is quite remarkable for a 32 meter yacht i mean i know some 45 meter yachts that you get a six six and a half meter tender on we fitted a nine meter here so. actually ali's just telling me if you didn't pick that up that uh, they've actually fitted a nine meter tender on one of these models so that's a big consideration for a lot of people buying an explorer yacht um moving up to the uh, to the sun deck and this is a very good very good size and also interestingly on this for 32 meter it's quite unusual to have a flybridge which is the control station up here um, often at 32 meters you can only drive the yacht from an enclosed position but uh, I know a lot of yacht owners would much rather be able to uh, have them driven from up here so they have that uh, they have that possibility if any of you saw a video I did quite a while ago about Explore Yachts um, one of the character or a few of the characteristics I mentioned in that video is the need for a high bow lots of space for tenders and toys and quite often as well you get these reverse rake windows which are very nautically sound I mean that's that's the kind of forward windshields that you want to see in case you're taking any real high waves and this is a very high bow we're actually on the upper deck now uh, and this is where the bow is and as you can see there's a lot of space for sunbathing, just a really beautiful area to enjoy the uh, sun. Well, I filmed that just before the holiday season and as you can see, I'm now back in my home office. I have to say that the visit to New Marine was an absolute pleasure. And if I can pass on some advice to any viewers who may be considering constructing a new yacht, I would always recommend that you visit the shipyard before you pull the trigger on your decision. In the case of New Marine, it was very clear to me that this is a company that doesn't limit their efforts to just building great yachts, as important as that is. But they also clearly put a lot of effort into building a company culture and putting systems in place that will help them to continue to build great yachts for many years to come. The 32 XP that I viewed will almost certainly have been delivered to her new owner by now, so I'd like to end this video with some footage of a finished yacht in its natural habitat, cruising the ocean.